Hi everyone, I'm Seth Miller, the Executive Director of the Innocence Project of Florida, and this is our April installment of our video blog. We actually taped an earlier version of this, and we we're all ready to go up with it. We had done the editing, and we're all ready to go, and things have been moving so quickly here that we realized that uh, it was just going to be out of date and you're going to think what are they doing over the Innocence Project of Florida giving us outdated information. So we're here to talk to you about two very important things, big, big news at the Innocence Project of Florida and in um, the lives of our newest exoneree, Derek Williams. Uh, so we'll just start right out there. Um, last time we talked, we had had our evidentiary hearing in Manatee County in the case of Derek Williams. And you'll, and you'll remember that Derek Williams uh, was convicted in 1993 of a Manatee County rape, and we had DNA test results from the perpetrator's t-shirt that was left in the victim's car after the rape that demonstrated that Derek Williams uh, did not wear that shirt uh, during the commission of the crime. We had filed a motion, had a hearing, and we were waiting for the results, and uh, only two weeks after our evidentiary hearing, uh, an order came on the fax machine, and uh, it was a very good order. It said that uh, the judge agreed with us that Derek Williams was in fact wrongfully convicted and he needed a new trial. And the judge concluded a few things. Uh, first, he concluded that uh, Derek Williams was excluded as the contributor of DNA on the inside collar of that t-shirt. Um, that the result um, demonstrated that Derek Williams uh, it was highly likely that he didn't wear the shirt during the commission of the crime. Three, that 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 DNA result directly contradicted the victim's identification of Derek as the perpetrator. And four, had the jury heur heard that DNA testing at the time of trial, they would have acquitted. Therefore, he gave Derek a new trial and gave the state the opportunity to decide whether they were even going to retry him or not. So we were freaking out. We were all happy. This is a wonderful thing. Uh, but just a day later, um, the state pulled the rug out from under us and out from under Derek and decided they were going to appeal. Now this was an unfortunate, unfortunate decision uh, because really the state didn't really have good grounds to appeal. Not only did uh, the judge uh, do a wonderful job on the DNA claim uh, with that order making it sort of appeal proof, but he also found that the state um, unlawfully destroyed evidence in Derek's case uh, and, and gave us some future relief if the state were to go to a new trial. Um, we, you know, complained to them, we told them they're being ridiculous, that they're going to cause an innocent man to stay in prison for an extra six, eight, six or eight months or even a year uh, while this appeal is pending. So we set a bond hearing and we're all ready to go down to the bond hearing um, and uh, we get a call the day before the bond hearing uh, from the state attorney and after a weekend of thinking about it, um, they decided that they would withdraw their appeal and they would drop the charges against Derek Williams. Uh, which meant that all we had to do was drive six hours to the prison and go pick him up and return him to his family. Uh, we ran around all crazy and we got our, we went home and got some clothes, threw him in a bag, um, figured out that we were going to get him from Hardy Correctional in the middle of nowhere in Bowling Green, Florida. And we drove the six hours there and met his wonderful family. We, 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 there's a sort of wonderful moment and I, I feel like I want to describe it to you so you can understand. Um, we did. They, we'd call his family and they say, we're going to meet you at this country store. Now we've never been to this country store, it's about five miles from the prison, and there's nothing around except this country store. And we roll up to the country store and there are 11 cars full of Derek Williams' family. And we roll up and they're jumping around and yelling and screaming, and there's this sort of wonderful moment where we got to get out of the car, give them all hugs, and tell them that this was going to be it. We're going to drive down in a caravan to the prison and we're going to get Derek out. Derek's a, a, a father, a grandfather, a brother, an uncle, a son, a, you name it, and all his family members were there to support him. Uh, we got there and about 8 o'clock at night, as the sun was setting, um, our whole staff walked Derek uh, out of prison and he was nervous, he was crying, and he didn't know what to do. Um, he wasn't sure whether he was going to be able to do it, but once he got close to his family, and his family approached him uh, he lunged into their arms and it was just sort of a beautiful moment and uh, we just got to step back and and enjoy that moment for what it was. It's sort of a it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for Derek obviously hopefully to never happen again and uh, certainly an important time for us uh, who have been working so hard to make it happen for him and his family. And Derek's doing great. 
uh, you know, he's, he's settling back in. He, uh, he married his um, longtime girlfriend, who was the mother of his child, and the, the grandmother of his grandchild. And uh, he's just enjoying his family and enjoying his freedom, um, you know, trying to find work, and, uh, and, and just really just thankful for everything uh, that has happened to him in the last six, six or eight months. So it's, uh, Derek is the 13th DNA exoneree in Florida, the 10th DNA exoneree in Florida to be uh, wrongfully convicted based on witness misidentification. And this is actually a perfect lead-in to uh, a bill that's moving through the legislature right now that, that if passed, could prevent misidentifications like that we saw in Derek Williams' case. Now, uh, Senate Bill 1206 and House Bill 821, we've talked to you about them before. They're going to provide a mandatory um, way for law enforcement agencies to do lineups in Florida um, so that they can remove suggestiveness and diminish the opportunity uh, for a misidentification that leads to wrongful convictions. So, we have these two great bills, uh, and you know, law enforcement, of course, has been um, uh, you know, strenuously objecting to these bills, saying, for example, that it's going to cost too much money. So we address those concerns by putting cost-neutral alternatives to this mandate of, for double-blind administration. Okay, so we, we met their concerns, but that wasn't enough. They've decided that they don't want a mandate. They don't want to be told what to do by the legislature. They think that they can just figure this out themselves, all 400 law enforcement agencies in Florida, and still have uniform administration of justice throughout Florida. But we know better. Um, this past week, the legislate, law enforcement prevailed in the legislature to water down the House version of this bill, which they did, to go from a mandate saying you have to use the best practices that we know prevent wrongful convictions to a much more watered down bill that basically says write a written policy and we hope that you'll include the mandate that, uh, that um, you know, will help uh, prevent wrongful convictions. Um, this is a major step backwards and um, you know, we're hoping that Senator Negron's bill in the Senate, which is a very good bill, will be the bill that wins the day. Um, you know, if you go to our blog this week and in coming weeks, we'll have action alerts on our blog um, as, as um, things move forward that can tell you who you need to call um, in the legislature and who you need to urge to pass the more robust uh, Negron bill, Senate Bill 1206. Again, this is the only bill that's pending in front of the legislature that will help uh, prevent misidentifications that lead to wrongful convictions because frankly law enforcement has had the last 20 years um, of, of social science uh, to tell them what the best practices are and we've had it's been 11 years since our first DNA exoneration because of a misidentification they've had time to get this right and um, we've had too many exonerations too many wrongful convictions since to give them any more time to try to get it right sometimes uh, some things require a legislative solution and this is one of those things because we just can't wait anymore the real perpetrators are out on the street while innocent people are languishing in prison. And when those innocent people get out, we as a ta the taxpayers have to spend millions of dollars to compensate them that could all be prevented if we just take some simple, um, common sense steps that are supported by social science to help prevent wrongful convictions by diminishing the number of misidentifications. So watch out for that on our, on our blog, Plain Error. And you know, keep in touch with us. If you go to our uh, website, www.floridainnocence.org, we're going to continue to have important information about how Derek Williams is doing, about the rest of our cases, and of course about um, this eyewitness identification reform bill. So things are busy here. We're going to keep moving, uh, keep trying to get innocent people out of prison. And for now, we'll see you next month. Thanks a lot.